Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, Saturday night at the Jones, Pets, Heads were falling off. It was U-G-L-Y, and the Red Raiders had no alibi. The final rhyme of the show, or more to come. Hang around to find out next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Great to be back with you on Locked On Texas Tech, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen with the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Glad to see you out there, Chris, uh, after surviving a rough Saturday (laughs) night from Jones Stadium. Just about nothing goes like what you want it to, right? I mean, I think we knew it was going to be a battle, black and blue kind of game. And you're going to have some chances. And and Tech did have some of that. But by the end of the night, the gap was large as far as the final score. And, man, it wasn't just a loss, but a loss with some really disappointing things involved for Texas Tech. A lot of that offensively speaking. And, of course, uh, with the quarterback play and the turnovers. So, man, I don't know that you could have scripted, uh, for the most part, um, you know, much to go more poorly for for the Red Raiders down the stretch, right, and winning time, third and fourth quarters. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was, you know, worst case scenario in many ways. <laughs> you know, look, I mean, and, and, and we, we've, we've lived through this past decade ish, and, and you've seen some bright spots and certainly a lot, a lot of low moments. But this, this, what was most frustrating here is that you, you kind of semi build to a fun game. It all sets up nighttime, meaningful opponents, uh, you know, standings. And all those things, and you you get Pat Mahomes here, and then you just kind of pick your just the worst time to play your worst game. And and Baylor, to their credit, they played their best game. I don't think anybody would dispute that. This was the best game that they've played all all season, probably on both sides of the ball. This is why. I mean, we, you, you saw right in front of you for three plus hours, unfortunately, why so many people picked them to win the league. Uh, this season because their big people were just better than yours for much of the night. And I, cause I didn't think the defense played very well at all. I mean, you, you, you get a gift turnover, but you just couldn't ever stop the run when you wanted to. I mean, that's, that's True. really, yeah, you, you didn't really, and, 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 and their guys made plenty of catches down the field. I just didn't think that's the part. And I told you that last week, that's the part that I thought if you could win that matchup or, or play that matchup and kind of make Baylor, I thought you, 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 well, that's going to go a long way in deciding it. And I just thought Richard Reese, I mean, he kind of put a highlight tape together on you and got into the end zone multiple times. And then I don't know, I don't know what to think about your quarterback position now because you, you could try to sell me on all of them. I could try to sell you on all of them. There's no no brainer answer right now because Baron, you know, clearly had his worst game 11 of 34 and three interceptions. And that's just, and, he, he looked um, slowed down. He looked sped up. He looked confused. He was didn't have any time. And, all, I mean, really offensively, it was just there was not many bright spots there at all. Um, but, geez, man, you have three different quarterbacks throw a pick in the fourth quarter. I've never heard of such a thing. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about getting weird Saturday night, but not that weird. <laughs> oh, man, it's frustrating. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Could I – Could I possibly make an argument to you that the defense was not helped at all (laughs) by what the offense was doing early on in the game? Because I'm, you know, talking about on the morning after report over the weekend, you know, time of possession just blows me away as the Red Raiders were doubled up. And you look at these first handful of drives for Texas Tech, seven plays, turn it over on down, seven plays, interception, three and out, you punt, took 48 seconds. I mean, there was just... (laughs) Oh, the yeah. defense was out there for quite some time. Clearly, clearly running Richard Reese had his way with the Red Raiders. But I get so frustrated too, Chris, and what seems to just be more often than not kind of disjointed or not complimentary football, I guess, for the yeah. team at large. And you're right. And the turnovers certainly dictate some of those extra snaps that the defense plays and, and all True. those things. I mean, th- there's no doubt. I I guess I'm even just saying when it when it still kind of mattered and you hadn't been on the field that much – 
I mean, it was you, you just really didn't have an answer for their run game when it mattered. I mean, it wasn't they didn't just repeatedly gash you, but they consistently move the chains. And the, the best way to describe this game is that it was clearly played exactly the way Baylor wanted it. There was nothing about that game the way that Tech wanted to play. You never got into any kind of tempo. You didn't create near enough takeaways on defense or make enough meaningful plays on defense on third and fourth downs and things like that 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 would change the game. And it, it this is – it, you know, Baylor's kind of Wisconsin. They're kind of Big Ten ish. They're kind of service academy, service academy ish. They're kind of Kansas State ish in that it's kind of simple. It can be sometimes flashy, but they just like really don't hide what they're going to do. And I mean, early in the game, they just started moving their big tight ends over there, and then they're just like, "Hey, by the way, we're going this way." Right. And, you know, I mean, it wasn't. There's not a lot of pizzazz. Uh, but it just they just leaned on you and re- really on, on both and, and I thought your offensive line clearly played their worst game so much of that is on that group some of it is on Baron for maybe holding on the ball a little bit but in like the interception the triple coverage don't know you know what what he's uh, seeing there your receivers didn't help you because Donovan Smith throws a touchdown pass to Loic Fungi drop. Uh, I think J.J. Sparkman gets a touchdown pass that's thrown by Baron Morton, wrestled away from him. I mean, that, that's not on the quarterback or the the O.C. or the yeah. whoever else we want. I mean, so it was a collective, you know, frustrating day offensively. And guess what? Now you're probably play, about to play the best offense in the uh, the Big 12, and so you better start scoring some points this week or you're not going to have a chance. Yeah, no doubt about it. And. I'm, uh, by the way, jealous-ish of all the issues that you just ran down there that Baylor kind of is. I'd like to be all of those things as well. I mean, they're just – they'll slug it out, and they'll find mm-hmm. some success doing it. And uh, football's changed a lot, but that part hadn't changed. Still wins football games more often than not if you can do that successfully. And I think what you're pointing to defensively really kind of shows up as far as the third downs uh, for Texas Tech defensively to begin the game because they actually put themselves in some good positions. I mean, third, Baylor has third and five, third and eight, third and eight, third and seven, third and eight, third and 13, their first six third downs. And what do they get on those? Eight yards, nine yards, six yards, 10 yards, three, you stop them there, and 10 yards. I mean, you were in these positions, but then like when you're saying the timeliness of needing a big play, that defense did not come through. Uh, they, they didn't come, in up, come up with it in those moments, unfortunately. So I, I know when you lose a game 45 to 17, uh, you got a, a big pie of fault to split up a million ways, <laughs> right? Everybody gets a piece uh, of this one. But, man, what a disappointing day after what was such an encouraging day and, and looking pretty good in all aspects against West Virginia. You flip the script uh, coming up this time around against Baylor. I want yeah, to get to one. Well, ahead, the, last thing I'll, the last thing I'll say, and probably why I, I hold the defense to a bit of a higher standard, to me more than the offense is, all summer – where is the age on this team? Where is all the experience on this team versus where is all the inexperience on this team? Yeah. You know, and that's where the, the defense and, – and, again, it's not necessarily that way eight games in. However, we, we, we've talked about it. That that defense, it needs to do its part. And, Tim, for the most part, Tim DeRuiter's group absolutely has. But in a game like that, that's why I just – I guess I'm, I'm, I'm making sure we point that out because offensively you kind of expected some inconsistencies because it's – True. You've had some injuries over there and, and all that. But defensively, I just thought – I thought that's where you really – that was where it was going to be for the most part won or lost or would give you a chance. And I just didn't think that that group was good. But it's not necessarily their fault as much as Baylor's really good at that too. They just picked a really good time to – kind of yeah. settle in and just blow up on you. They, they kind of went West Virginia or did to, did to you what you did to West Virginia, I guess. But the two the two games, uh, the, the book in the, the last two Saturdays, couldn't be more opposite from a Red Raiders standpoint. It's wild. <laughs> I know. It's just so crazy. And I don't know. I don't. I know everybody wants to be more consistent, right? When you play your oh, best, yeah. you want to do it again and you want to do it more often. But that's probably kind of what – uh, Coach McGuire and his staff are, are trying to figure out this week is how they do that uh, and try to get back to something on the positive side of things in Fort Worth. And yeah, I, you have to remind yourself over and over and over uh, the guys in green, they got to try their best and they got to make a plan all week long, just like everybody else did. So I want right. to give credit to Baylor because the, they do a lot of things that I want Texas Tech to be able to do consistently uh, someday as a program. And 
uh, yeah, those third downs are some of those other big, big moments. Baylor was winning more of them than Texas Tech, and that's why you wind up with the result that you did. Why did we wind up uh, with the result that we did in the end zone late in the game? I want to talk zebras uh, coming up on the other side. Could be a quick conversation because maybe I'm just – missing something but i want to get chris's thoughts on some big moments one in particular as the game wound down coming up next on locked on texas tech but first make sure you are headed to bet online this week get the jump on all the trends the latest angles the latest action and the latest angles on the action for another college football weekend coming up it is your online hq for live betting keeping up with your slip but also keeping up with your team throughout the day so get on over right now to bet online or check it out in the app store and don't be caught off guard you could be one of the sharps you're developing that wisdom via our friends at bet online once again this week where the game starts locked on texas tech part of the locked on podcast network It's your team every day worldwide throughout the galaxy on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Thanks to those who have subscribed. Do so if you have not. Help us make that push to the number 2,000. It's going to feel so good when we get there. I was mistaken. That's not the jacket number, Chris. That is actually the commemorative keychain number. So we're still still working towards that commemorative keychain, but we're going to get there someday. I do have belief i almost though could not believe what my eyes were seeing whenever it came to a couple of key calls in end zones chris uh which one do you want to start with here as uh, it was bad news for the red raiders and a resounding chorus of boos following these decisions yeah i I probably had a lot more issue with one than the other okay the 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 the, the one that I have the most issue with, which was just uh, bad officiating, I thought, was the, the pass interference call on, I believe it was Malik Dunlap, or maybe it was Rayshad Williams, excuse me, at the very end of the first half. There's nothing there. Uh, and and I, I don't you, – you, you basically just gift wrap Baylor uh, first, first and goal from the two or whatever it was, and it allows them to, to score that touchdown. I just, it, it's just, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm down there. The, there's some conversations amongst the replay officials and all that stuff. And I hear some of the officials down there that are whatever going, they can review that, but they, they just chose not to even look at it. Uh, I, I also will tell you there was a play earlier on in the half that was clearly the Baylor receiver catches it out of bounds. Baylor runs up and snaps it, but no review, and it just the, the, those, those parts were frustrating. But I bet you're going to want to talk about uh, JJ Sparkman's uh, catch or non-catch. Well, I do, but I'm willing to be uh, persuaded that it's <laughs> it's not even conversational or conversation worthy. Is it not? You, you said you were uh, well not as up in arms over that one. I, I think the way the rule reads, I, I think they got that one right because the rule reads if you come down simultaneously with it then it's the receiver's ball. But that's not what happened. J.J. Sparkman let it get ripped away from him as they come down. And he's kind of got his hands on it, whereas the other guy's got it like this. I mean, it looks to me like you just kind of – and that's just how it happens as, as you go to the ground. That's what we we kind of saw and uh, and all that. I just think it's – it's that one's on J.J. Sparkman. That's my take. I mean, it's frustrating. It's kind of a bang-bang. But the way that they explain the rule, if it's a tie, and I just didn't, it didn't appear that it was because the, the other guy, I mean, he's got it, I mean, to his chest, and you're kind of roll around on top, and you just don't look like you have it uh, compared to compared to him. And so that that part, I, I mean, again, I was grasping for straws at the time, and I was like, you know, frustrated and wanting the boo <laughs> and everything like that too. I mean, yeah. don't 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 get me wrong. I just, but but the pass interference one, I, I I had a major, a major issue with. I don't know what they see. I don't know what you're supposed to do as a DB. There's really barely any contact at all, and there's far more that goes on all the time. Oh yeah. And there's no call. And so I I don't. I mean I, I don't. I, I think that's a that's a, that's one of those calls they're going to go. Hey man, we screwed that up. But that that totally changes the game at that time. I mean, seventeen to three and a half versus. 
what, 13 to three, mm-hmm. you know, potentially. I mean, that, that's yeah. just a big difference when you still kind of had some fight in you. And and the other one w- was still, I think, when the game was somewhat in question too. But um, I, I'm willing to listen to the way the rule is written and, and with what my eyes saw and go, okay, I get that one. The other one I don't get. But I yeah, can see I think- why everybody's frustrated about both. I think you're right uh, as far as the catch is concerned in that you could definitely, I mean, you could see with your own eyes it looked like, and I I had to go back and watch it on television to really understand this. Uh, I mean, by that point in the game, was the the Jumbotron a little blurry to your boy? I don't know. (laughs) But I didn't wait for the review to start my booze. I just sat right on in uh, with Meemaw just a couple of seats down from me. We were ready to go. Um, But whenever you see that, like if a catch – if there was 100% uh, available of a catch, uh, the Baylor guy had like 88% of that ball. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like he yeah. definitely, as you were just describing there, the position they were in, it was just like, you know, we more so had a finger on it. And I I get it. But, man, that would have actually extended a little bit, I think, some opportunity there for Texas Tech. If Agreed. Would have made yep. it 31-24, I think. I think, I think it that's was 31, right. 17 at that time. Yeah. And, yeah, the call before half, I, I – I completely agree because that, that's a huge swing. And not only in that, I'm sorry, not only just in general as far as what points are available, but in that moment, you're going into the locker room and just one more smack to rid any momentum whatsoever <laughs> from the Texas Tech sideline or from that Red Raider halftime locker room, I, I think is uh, can be really disheartening for the Red Raiders. Um, and speaking of disheartening, Chris, I want to get to a question as we wrap up this edition of the program. Coming up in just a moment that, depending on your answer, could be the most concerning thing to come out of this game, aside from just taking a conference L. We'll get to that coming up next on Locked on Texas Tech. But first, Armin Williams is ready to help you save money. The cost of your business running high, do you even know? Well, if you do or don't, Armin Williams is the man that you need to find at SaveWithArmin.com to help reduce those costs with Schooly Mitchell, North America's number one business cost reduction company. And to boot Chris, he's a Red Raider. So why not save some money with Armin Williams, right? Oh yeah, he's a great Red Raider. And and again, just so we're clear, if they can't find you savings, they you don't owe anybody anything. That that's that's the best part about this. It's it doesn't cost you a thing unless they ultimately help you. I think just this last week, Armin helped an HVAC company save about 40% on their merchant merchant services expense. That was about 22 grand a year. Okay. Whoa. That's real money, folks. That's real money. And if you if you're a retailer and you're you know in the credit card processing and all that, make sure you give call Armin a call and let him look through. Make sure you're getting those best rates because those credit card companies take a they take a cut every time that you you process. Uh, a sale or anything like that so they can help you uh, dive in all that and it's not just those things we're just giving you a few examples it's all kinds of different categories that they will look at just to try to help you and again if they don't save you money you don't owe anybody anything so i just uh, go go to go check out armin save with armin.com good dude good people trying to help red raiders man no upfront cost it just starts with a free analysis and as chris mentioned Uh, They only share in any savings found. So SaveWithArmin.com is where you need to be to get the ball rolling if you are paying too much for your business services. Check it out right now at SaveWithArmin.com. Thanks for making Locked On Texas Tech a part of your day, whenever, wherever. However, we are coming together. Glad to be with you on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Uh, Chris, before we get out of here, I mentioned the word disheartening as we were talking about a uh, a big play there for Baylor to get into the end zone prior to a halftime. Could be disheartening for that halftime momentum or that sideline, that being red, uh, the Red Raiders as you begin the second half. There's something that's different about, uh, you know, just being defeated or somebody getting the better of you versus that happening and you becoming a disheartened kind of football team or football player. It was a wide gap at the end of the day, 45 to 17. I don't feel like that really paints the true picture of uh, the game being a little bit closer, in my opinion, because Tech certainly had chances 
uh, in the second half to to make it interesting later on. Um, but I'm wondering, a, a pretty dominating result there. Did we continue to see Texas Tech compete to the level that they had prior, and I think really the entire season, until it was all said and done? Did you see any discouragement or a disheartened team at various points that you haven't seen in other games? How did you gauge that? Because I really do think that could be, I mean, that, that's one of the more important things coming out of this type of result because it has been a team that's played really hard. Don't want to lose it. What would you see? Yeah, I, I think at some level, no. Uh, be, and, and, I, and, and that's at the tail end just because I think that when you turn it over that many times and you – are on the field that much on defense or when some of these turnovers result in points, you, you just, you just start to kind of the shoulders kind of drop and all that, but it, it wasn't toward and, until toward the the tail end. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I mean, a lot of the students, they, they left uh, kind of after halftime, yeah. you know, I mean, halftime, the student section had kind of, you know, emptied out a bit. And then it, it you know, as the game kind of didn't really go your way there, there was more and more people that kind of, Left and you could just kind of sense the air come out of the stadium a little bit, but no, I, I don't know if we saw, you know, I, I get it, uh, just because when you, you you it's a deflating feeling, you know, and I don't think that at any point you felt like you could stop them. I also don't think at mm -hmm. any point you felt like you could get in any kind of rhythm on offense. That's a credit to to Baylor, and you tried everybody at quarterback. I mean, so it, it's not like anybody was sitting over there going, "Man, I, I could have." I could have won us the game or I could have created a spark I and mean, everybody had their chance and it didn't really happen. But, uh, but that, that's, but I, that's why I think like this week, I think you'll learn a lot about Joey's program because they're not going to be given a chance to win. Uh, they're, 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 this is going to be a, a party that TCU is hosting. They got national TV there. It's the big noon kickoff on Fox and all the hubbub that comes with that. You're going to have TV production going on on the field prior to the game and all the stuff that comes with it. TCU's been rolling. You're not going to be given a chance, but I, I, I'll be surprised if you don't go in there and, and play play them tough. It may not be good enough, but that's what that's what I would fully expect. Because I mean, he 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 flat out told me after the game, "Look, this starts with me. I'm going to challenge these kids. I'm going to challenge my coaches. I'm going to challenge myself. We did something wrong this week, and it can't happen again. We, we've mm -hmm. got to fix it." And he he was. He was frustrated and 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 pissed, uh, just to use the term. But he also understands it doesn't matter who you play or who's playing quarterback or where the game is or whatever. If you turn it over five times in this league, man, it's curtains. Forget oh, yeah. about it. We can talk about all the other stuff you, you want, but the turnovers are a deflating feeling, uh, especially when it – because think about it. I believe you're at 13 total turnovers in – when you look at the games, let's see, NC State, Kansas State, and now Baylor, you have 13 giveaways in those three games alone. Mm. I mean, just though, I mean, four in the first two and then five against the Bears. That You can't live that way, man. Nope. You know, I mean, you, you, you can't. I don't care what else we're talking about. If that it, it continues to be a problem, I mean – Forget everything else. I mean, you just can't do it. You're not good enough to overcome that. Nobody really is. No, from the SEC to the tiniest <laughs> six-man football district in Texas, in Alaska, wherever, the Eskimos can't overcome five turnovers uh, out there playing between their igloos. I mean, that's just – that ain't going to fly uh, really in any football game unless you take it away six times. I guess maybe that would fly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> took it yeah. away six times, but <laughs> yeah. that ain't going to happen very often. So that, that was definitely a killer. Look, you know, to me, taking your fourth loss on the season, that, that's no great shock, and that's no, that's no crisis of any kind. But if you, if you found a football team on the other side of this one that was a, unable to get wind back in their cells, so to speak, or unable to continue to give great effort, really show a lot of want to and have that high care factor like Joey McGuire has described before about this team, that would be a bit of a crisis to me. That would be of extreme concern. I don't know what the record is going to wind up to be at the reg at the end of the regular season, Chris. I feel like Texas Tech has shown themselves more often than not to be bowl worthy, which is really nothing to write home about. But nonetheless, win as many as you lose and, and you can go to a bowl game. Um, but I think the one thing that's really blown me away, and I've been very happy to see, is that you've continued to get tougher and tougher and tougher and more resilient, more hard-nosed, more tough-minded 
uh, as a football program. And so I'm really hoping that, you know, this first like really, I don't want to say shocking loss, but hell, you were two and a half point home favorite. And you lost 45 to 17. So, you know, one of these that's really like, this uh, is real adversity. Yeah, this hot, is real hot bowl of cold chili, man, in your yep. face. You got punched in the <laughs> mouth. Yeah, you you got punched in the mouth, and I I want to see, and I think most people probably would. How do they respond to it? You know, do they, you know, because we we Casey, we've talked a lot about man. You, you feel like you're starting to improve, and it's kind of you're starting to get better, and all that, and now you've taken a big step back. Yep. You know, and so you know, okay, now what do you do? Do you keep going backward, or do you do you do you push forward? And and then we look up and go. That was an anomaly. That was just like the exception to, to the season What was that game. And and I hope that is indeed the case because there's plenty of winnable games left on your schedule. Sure. But there's not any of them that are going to be easy. And we can talk about maybe Kansas at home being easy. It's not going to be. I'm going to tell you right now. And Jalen Daniels will probably be back for that. But you, you've got to figure out a way to win two more games just to get bowl eligible. you know. And you've only yeah. got four games to do it. And so – that's why it was just such an opportunity that I think you just couldn't take advantage of. And that's the most frustrating thing yep. it, it, to lose one is one thing, but to lose that way, that's, that's uh, that really stinks. Could have had a little house of money to play with. You feel like if you got to win. I, uh, great way uh, to put Baylor. it. Absolutely. Like your, your margin for error remains very thin. Now You've got two of those four at home, two away, of course. And those two away, man, against a really tough team in Fort Worth. And a really tough team, though not all that successful, and a very tough environment uh, in Ames, Iowa. So, be curious to see how they fare down the stretch. I just, you can go a long way uh, with great effort, and I feel like this team has done that. You can go a long way with tough mindedness. You get down, you don't quit. I feel like this team has done that, but there hadn't been a result like this just yet. So, it'll be very, very interesting uh, to see what the response is like in Fort Worth in a position, Chris. I mean, you should be excited if if you're a Red Raider or if you're Joey McGuire, because you immediately oh do do tell I'm, I'm I need some excitement <laughs> yeah do, hey well the fill sun me has in. come up the sun has <laughs> okay. come up first you I would much rather have this game coming up this opportunity coming up Chris to be honest yeah. with you I'm not one of those that wants to play every game on rookie level I would much rather have this opportunity than Kansas or Iowa That's State a, on the road it's a great point I mean yeah. bounce back get something that your fans will care about mm-hmm. and it just so happens that. Texas Christian is cared about nationally right now, so that wouldn't be too too shabby either. But you've got every opportunity to go right back and retake all of that momentum for your season or for your team if you can do something good in Fort Worth. And look, I respect the football team. I don't respect the environment. If it is an environment, it'll be because of people in red and black. So th- this should not be some like, woe is me. Now we have to face big, bad Texas Christian and big, bad Eamon Carter. <laughs> Give me a break. I mean, you're going to have red and black all over that thing. Yeah. And so I'm, I think they, I hope they have that attitude. You need to have that attitude that, Hey, we're thrilled that this is next on the schedule because I, I want an immediate opportunity to bounce back and, and do something that, that will be meaningful. So I don't know if they feel that way or not, but, but that's not what I'm yeah, hoping Joey, they feel like. Well, Joey probably catches a break from that standpoint. You're right. Because you were already going to get your kid's attention because of how you played, but it, it's much easier knowing who, who, who you have next uh, because they're, you know, again, there, there's going to be national TV cameras there and, yeah. you know, you, you've got all kinds, all the, all the stuff. And, and, and again, he can play the, nobody's giving you a chance card all he wants. Cause that's going to be the reality of it. But, uh, but I'm, true. but I'm, but I'm with you. I, I think it, it would be, it would be tougher to get like, if it was just some whole hum, game or some non-conference game or some whatever or, or one of the worst or even if it was Iowa State next week but uh but because it's uh, a team because I think the college football rankings are going to come out the first rankings going to come out this week and TCU is going to be top eight uh maybe top you know top six uh but when it's all said and done there's only so many undefeated teams uh, out there right now so uh th- th- this this will be and again if you go get this done if you pull this off it's the best win of anybody in the Big 12 this year, period. I mean, it can't be disputed. So you, you, you've got that uh, mm-hmm. potentially at stake as well because it would be the best win of anybody in the league to this point because they're the top team and going to win at their place would be uh, would trump everything else. Battle for the saddle is on deck. You need the win. You need the saddle. You don't walk back to Lubbock. It's going to be much better horseback. Um, Chris, appreciate the time today, man. And we've got a, an action-packed week this week, getting ready for the Horn Frogs, of course. But – Hope everybody out there is uh, catching up on anything you might have missed as far as the morning after report. 
uh, as we digested immediately over the weekend, Tech and Baylor, but also bonus locked on Texas Tech as the Big 12 had big television network contract news, and we broke it down in a bonus episode up right now. If you haven't seen it, check it out on YouTube or anywhere you get podcast and we are back at it right here on locked on texas tech coming up tomorrow new episodes each weekday chris uh thanks for the time man catch you on the other side yes, yes sir keep hope alive my man we will and he means it this week take it to heart <laughs> this is when it matters to keep hope alive and be right back here for locked on texas tech coming up tomorrow on the locked on podcast network where it's your team every day thanks for making it your first listen and make locked on sports today your second listen as he recaps all the big stories across the country from all your favorite teams, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. For the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. We'll see you next time on Locked On Texas Tech.